Hello and welcome to the second installment of my masterclass videos on Surface Builder and in this video we're going to be stepping it up a notch and, uh, and showing you a few more advanced features. So in the previous video we looked at button objects and how they're able to send a specific MIDI command to a channel or port and we also looked at attaching functions to those buttons uh, to perform uh, internal tasks. And today I want to look at the uh, the MIDI dump, the uh, bulk MIDI uh, feature, which is a function that can be added to a button uh, to allow us to send multiple commands to multiple destinations. And to aid us in this task, we're going to open the MIDI monitor, which can be found in the open window a sub menu on the main menu and we're going to toggle its monitoring to monitor output. So let's begin by adding a button object to the surface and resizing it suitably. Uh, now if I tap on this I'm going to bring up the object properties window and on the right here you can see the MIDI setup and we usually use this as um, to set up whatever message we want to send from the button. But in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to hit the function button and we're going to, instead of sending a MIDI command, we're going to choose send bulk MIDI. And then we're going to tap the button that says uh, tap to edit. Um, and this bulk MIDI window will appear. Now I'm going to close down the object properties for a minute and we're going to take a look at this window. Now by pressing the state button here, you can see that we can toggle the button state from selected to non-selected. And I'm going to toggle it to the selected state. And what we're going to do, we're going to add MIDI commands into this list on the right, on the left here. And we do that by selecting the type of command we want to send, in this case a note on. And setting uh, the note and the velocity. In this case, I'm going to send 127. And I'm going to hit the Add button at the bottom of the dialog. So we've actually added one item to the list, and that item sends a note on, note 60, at a velocity of 127. Uh, and we could add multiple of those to that list if we wanted. And each one specifies its own port and channel. Now these messages are sent when that button is selected. But when that button is released, we want to send a note off. So we can set the port and channel to be the same port and channel we sent the note on. And we can um, toggle this uh, selected state to normal. And then we can add a note off uh, for note 60 into that list box by pressing the add button. So now if we exit edit mode and press the button and hold it, you'll see that the value uh, note 60127 is sent. When we release, we get a note 60 zero, which is a note off. Now, while there's nothing stopping you entering all those uh, notes manually, uh, if you've got a hardware keyboard connected or a controller, um, you can do it much more easily using this record function at the bottom of the bulk MIDI dialog. Now I'm just going to delete the events I have in both lists here uh, to demonstrate this. And what I want to show you here is that if I look at my MIDI devices, uh, while well, I look at my Bluetooth, I can see that my Nano Studio is connected. And the first thing I want to do is go into the port mapping and make sure my Nano Studio is mapped to one of the ports uh, within within Surface Builder. Now I can press the record button and press a chord within my Nano Studio, and watch what happens. It will populate that uh, that list. I can change the list from selected to normal. Uh, hit record again, and I can record the note offs. I'm going to press a chord now. Then I'm going to hit the record and I'm going to lift my three fingers and they're the no-offs that we've captured. So that's another way of entering uh, MIDI data uh, by recording from an external source. Now I'd like to take an in 
depth look at uh, scenes and hidden objects and show you how they can be used to make better use of your surface area. And to demonstrate this, I'm going to create three buttons. Uh, each of these buttons uh, I'm going to label up scene A, B and C. And when we press one of these buttons, it's going to change scenes for us. Now, a surface file can have up to six scenes. Now, you've got to think of a scene as a page. So we can have six pages within a surface. If a surface contains more than one page, then it is a multi-scene surface. It's important to make that distinction. And I'll show you why later. So now we have our three buttons. So with button A selected, press the function button and then select change scene. And in the uh, data button below, actually pick the scene number. And you'll notice that as we uh, set this up, uh, we get a little icon appear and it names the, uh, the button for us. Now if I exit edit mode and press scene B, you'll see we go to scene B, but it's no easy way of getting back. But you can see on the bottom of the screen it says we're on scene B. Now in, uh, in edit mode we can actually use the scenes menu to switch between the various scenes manually using this uh, pop-up uh, toolbar. But that's really, uh, it's really not the best way to do things. I prefer to open the uh, floating uh, scenes window uh, that allows us to flick between scenes uh, very easily and that will remain on screen in and out of edit mode. Now we have these three buttons on scene A. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, select all of these buttons and then I'm going to uh, copy them and then switch to scene uh, B and paste these in and then flick to scene C and paste them in again. So we have these same buttons on all three pages. Now if we go out of edit mode and uh, flick the buttons you'll see on the floating scenes window that we are actually changing scene but since we have nothing on these uh, scenes, uh, uh, any objects, we don't get that visual impact. So I'm just going to quickly add um, one item to each of these pages so that we can uh, we can see it in action. And as, as you can see here, it means that we can build up interfaces using a small surface area, which is great when we're working within a host, a DAW, and we want the most content available uh, uh, or the most amount of controls available uh, using the smallest surface area. Now if you want to keep all objects on the same scene there is a little trick you can use to using the uh, uh, show and hide button function to uh, uh, hide components within a scene. And to demonstrate that, I'm going to put a button object on there, which is going to be what triggers the show and hide. And I'm going to stick uh, uh, three uh, rotary knobs within this scene. And uh, once you have those three rotary knobs, I'm, it's, I'm going to give them all unique names. Otherwise, uh, it's hard to di differentiate between the objects that you're hiding uh, because all objects have got the same name. So let me just name these knob A, B and C, just for clarity. Now the aim here is that when I press that button and it's selected, I want those three knobs to appear. And when it's the button is not selected, I want them to disappear. So if we select the button now and bring up the object properties uh, and press the function button, if you look here, there's a show hide objects. And when we select that, uh, the button changes to show hide and if we press the data button underneath we get this little floaty window with the two lists. Now I can add those three knobs to that left list and what that means is I want these to show when that button is selected. Now before I forget this button needs to be a dual state button so that it when it toggles on and off. 
Now when the button is on in its selected state the three knobs appear and when it's off we get nothing. Now I want to make something appear when that button is not selected. Now if you saw that I swipe down on the button to bring up this dialogue when you're not in edit mode you can swipe down on any button with a function attached to get at its button properties. Now I'm simply going to add a couple of XY pads smack over the top of those, those knobs and then I'm going to swipe down on that uh, show high button and I'm going to add those two uh, XY pads into the hide list. Now when I come out and I toggle the uh, the button, the show hide button, you'll see it toggles between those different interface elements. So by mixing those show hide uh, uh, that show hide functionality with the scenes you get quite a lot of uh, object manipulation and you can make better use of your screen space especially in a door where there isn't a lot of room available. Now if you want to remove the icon within that uh, show hide button you just simply long press on the title and uh, you, you return just to just the title. Uh, vice versa if you want a different icon in there you can open the uh, stock images and drag an icon from here in uh, onto the button. Uh, you can also drag your own images into the stock images window uh, if you wish but make sure the PNG files uh, preferably with transparency. One really important thing to note is if you're working with multi-scene surfaces when you come to save your surface make sure that that little check mark is uh, checked under the name otherwise only the current scene that you're looking at will be saved into a single surface file. And this is reflected in the load surface dialog where uh, multi-surfaces are indicated by this little clapperboard and compressed files containing compressed audio will have the little speaker icon. Now one thing I'm constantly asked is what do, does the continuous mode do on uh, some of these uh, objects such as uh, knob x y pad faders and steppers and uh, i want to show you that today by means of the uh, mini monitor now by default this is on for all these objects and uh, to demonstrate that what i'm going to do is i'm going to just quickly uh, set up uh, some midi output on this uh, channel one let's make it send a cc on channel one and if we exit edit mode now and spin the, the knob, you'll see that as I spin that knob, it's continuously sending uh, values, um, which is what you want in most cases. But if we turn continuous mode off and try that same thing again, you'll notice that when I turn the knob, we're getting no output. We only get output when I release the knob and then the output is, is, is sent. Now this is quite useful in certain circumstances like when you're changing patches on an instrument. You don't want the destination instrument to be running through a ton of patch changes. Trying to force a destination instrument to change patch at that speed would be detrimental and probably cause that instrument to crash. So this is what continuous mode is for. So now I want to take a look at a new um, object we added to 1.01. .01 which is the chord pad object, which is an alternative to actually using uh, chord buttons. It's a lot more flexible and uh, gives us uh, the ability to send uh, bass notes and inversions. And uh, we can simply add one of these chord pads to a surface. Now, you probably want to extend your surface and give the chord pad a little bit more room because it's easier on the fingers. <laughs> Um, but once you've got a chord pad in place, uh, you can swipe down on the header of the chord pad and reveal this uh, uh, chord pad properties or chord strip properties, should I say. And from here, we can actually pick any chord and we can pick uh, a, a chord octave. But uh, here's a bunch of chord pads that I, uh, I stuck down on a surface. And uh, I'm going to demonstrate that using uh, uh, Copperhead as the source. And uh, I'm just going to try and play on the chord strip and let you hear the kind of thing you can do.
Now if I exit uh, back into edit mode again and click on the first uh, chord strip um, you can see that you can also get at the chord strip properties uh, pressing the data button uh, under the function button. But um, as I mentioned before if you're not in edit mode you can simply swipe down on the actual uh, chord strip header and be able to pick your chords manually this way. Uh, I think that's a, a a better idea really because you, you can use that at runtime and from presentation mode. Now if you notice to the right of these four chord strips we have two sliders, uh, one labelled up bass volume and one chord volume. If I select bass volume and open the properties up you'll see that this is a, a, just a normal slider stroke fader with a, 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 a chord bass volume uh, function attached. And the chord fader has a chord volume attached. So these will allow you to control the loudness of the individual inversions or the bass notes. So a very useful addition, I think you'll admit. So let's quickly talk about surface customization. And within Surface Builder, there are various ways of uh, making the interface stand out. And to demonstrate that, I'm going to create a brand new surface. Um, and uh, I'm going to just zoom in a little bit here. And uh, what we'll do is we'll We'll add a little bit of style to this using the options that are hidden away in the settings menu. Now we can independently change the background color, for, and we can uh, we can either go darker or lighter, and we can change the surface color as well. Now in this case, I've gone a bit lighter, but I've probably gone too light. Um, but it's, it's up to you really uh, how you want these uh, colors to be set up. And we also have something called surface style. Now this uh, simply adds the customary four pocket screws in the four corners, uh, puts a board around and a drop shadow. And it looks quite nice. We've got a sheen across there as well. And uh, this will Whatever size you make your surface, that will, uh, that style will be applied. Um, we also can do uh, light textured surfaces as well. So we've got white screws and a nice texture running through that surface. An alternative to that is to simply add an image object to uh, your surface and make it as big as the surface. And then uh, if we go off to... Uh, or any web page and find some nice interesting background we can copy that and then paste it into uh, this surface now we can change that to stretch to fit and uh, we can change that background border if we wish now it look a little bit odd until we come out of edit mode because the guides are still there but it, you can actually get create some nice uh, background styles using uh, an image object now another new addition in 1.02 uh, will be this uh, lock button that you see in the upper left corner of the object properties dialog. The little pad, it's almost like a little chain link that I'm toggling on and off now. That locks the current object into position so it won't move and it cannot be resized. Now this is really 
really useful when you put something like a background object there and you don't want to interact with it. So if I'm putting objects over the top of this, the last thing I want is to be moving this uh, uh, this image object around uh, underneath whatever else I'm trying to move. So you can lock uh, individual items in place using that little lock icon. Now, obviously each item has its own lock state, but uh, you may want to uh, lock everything uh, within your um, within your surface and you can do that by clicking the options button and the same lock symbol is in here now the difference being this unlocks unlocks everything on your surface now the last thing i want to talk about today is the ability to cue audio and this is a new feature that's been added to 1.02 so it'll be coming soon now, uh, this surface we've got in front of us here is courtesy of Bill Andre and gives us a, a little insight into what he does in his personal life. But uh, yeah, this is a, uh, a surface with uh, two scenes full of little jingles, which I believe Bill used for DJing. And if I just toggle these buttons, you'll get an idea of what we're looking at here. Now I've tried to colour code the buttons uh, to reflect the operation that they're performing. So the three uh, orange buttons uh, are mutually excluding each other. So if I try and play any of these and then go on and play another one, it will stop the previously playing clip. And it does that because all those three orange buttons are all within the same group. If you look at the group here, they're all in group one. Now the buttons in red are just uh, normal buttons, they're not part of any group, so that if we uh, start one or more of these clips playing, they will play over the top of each other. Um, in most cases, that's probably what you want. But there might be times when you want to actually cue uh, one thing after another. Now the three lime green buttons have a different function applied. If we look at this, it's the play audio cued function and each time I tap one of these clips it gets added to the queue the play queue and these will only play when uh, the previous clip is completed so despite me I'm in the tapping glasses uh, clip it's not playing because it's waiting for that initial applause to finish So as the applause comes to an end, the, uh, the tapping glasses will start to play. And I queued up a third clip called uh, Jeopardy Clock. And uh, that will start to play once the tapping glasses is complete. So by using the uh, queued functions and the, the play functions, you can work out what needs to follow what, what is allowed to overlay, overlay what, and so on. Now to stop it getting out of hand, if I started pressing all these buttons and starting a lot of clips going, uh, I can stop them all with one single button at the bottom here, stop all. And that is a new function that I've added uh, to a button uh, called stop all clips. And that also removes any clips from the play queue. So that brings this masterclass video to an end. Uh, don't forget to thumb up the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Many more videos and updates to come. I'll see you next time.